In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, 
but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You see them? Dear friends, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I think we English speakers have a little bit of a handicap in that we only have one word for love, and it gets used for all kinds of things, from God to the Iowa Hawkeyes or Cyclones or even tacos. But as I read the Bible, it seems to me that love is to be directed in only three ways, towards God, towards people, and towards creation. And so I know for myself, I need to be a little more discriminating about my use of that word love, and also a little clearer about what it exactly means. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. What is a Jesus kind of love? Well, I have a few thoughts. First of all, it is not love in general. It is love in particular. You've heard it said that we are to love all humanity. That's love in general. The only way we can love all humanity is by loving particular people. The person that we work with or that we live with or that lives next door to us. I think it was G.K. Chesterton, an English Christian, who said, it isn't loving humanity that I have trouble with. It is the person who lives above me, who plays their music way too loud. 
The love of Jesus is not a general love. It is a very particular kind of love for particular people. And secondly, I think it is a love that is not determined by feeling, but it is primarily a decision to act in a particular way. You see, we don't have to feel loving to act loving. We can actually love our neighbor, even if we don't like our neighbor or even if we have nothing in common with our neighbor. We can still love our neighbor because love is a decision to act towards somebody in a specific way. We love our neighbor by choosing to be fair, to be just, to be helpful toward them. Luther describes this kind of love in the small catechism. He says we are to love God so that we do not hurt our neighbor in any way, but help them in their physical needs. Luther says nothing about how we feel towards our neighbor. Nothing about whether we like our neighbor or have anything in common with our neighbor. Luther says, love is a decision to act towards our neighbor. The kind of love that Jesus calls us to is a decisive love. And then I think it is a love that is practical. The book of James says it so well. If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and you say to them, go in peace, but do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? You see, if you are hungry, love is food. The House of Compassion, which had its origins here at Trinity, is a ministry of practical love. It is love as deodorant. It is love as shampoo, or tooth, tooth, toothpaste, or diapers. Once a month, our Trinity kitchen is turned into a place of love. As a Lutheran services in Iowa worker comes with this autistic young man and she teaches him how to cook, teaches him practical life skills. C. Fong showed up here at Trinity one day with an abscessed tooth. I don't think I've seen too many people in more pain than he was in. But thank God, Dr. Mackey at the time said, bring him in right now, and he performed the oral surgery. You see, when you have an abscessed tooth, love is an oral surgeon who will be interrupted to tend to you. And Si Fong showed his gratitude by one day showing up here with this huge platter of Vietnamese egg rolls that he made. And he gave us these egg rolls, and, he, and then he also said to me, Father Greg, I am going to pray to Jesus, Mary, and my ancestors for your church. You see, sometimes love is egg rolls and a prayer. When we opened Trinity as an emergency shelter during some terrible, terrible cold weather, we had a lady who came here almost frozen. I mean, it was terrible. We had to have a doctor come look at her hands and her feet. And I don't know how long it had been since she had had a bath, a shower, or washed her hair. But one of the members of our parish who was helping with meals owns a salon. And she took this lady and took her to her salon one day, washed her hair, trimmed it up, did all kinds of nice stuff to it, and when Kathy came back, despite the fact of her situation, she was beaming 
because of this. Sometimes love is having your hair washed and made up. The love of Jesus is a practical love. So we are in the Easter season, but our gospel reading for today took us back to Maundy Thursday. What Jesus said, he said on the very last night of his life. He said, love one another as I have loved you. This is how the world will know that you are my disciples, because you love one another. The world will know that we are the people of Jesus that we are the followers of Jesus because of our love. Love not in general, but love in particular for very specific people. Love that is not just some kind of emotional feeling, but love that is decisive, that says no, regardless of who my neighbor is, whether I like them or have anything in common with them, I will act with fairness and justice, helping them as I can. The world will know that we are disciples of Jesus because our love is not a philosophy. Our love is not a theory, but our love is practical. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that the resurrection of Jesus has brought the hope of new life, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. For the Spirit to make us bold in witnessing to the amazing grace of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we will be faithful stewards of the soil, air, and water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For favorable weather as our farmers plant the crop that provides our daily bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our leaders, for those who protect us from harm, and for our communities to be guided by the truth, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those completing their studies this academic year, to have doors of opportunity opened to them, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and in the hospital, for those undergoing treatments, those recovering from surgery, for those who struggle with mental illness and addiction, for those whose hearts are weighed down by sorrow, gather all of these into the embrace of your healing love and give to them your help especially those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Amy. We ask that you would fill them with your wisdom as they serve the church. Keep them in good health and safe in their travels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable kingdom, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty Father, who created the world and called us to care for it with a spirit of wonder and faithfulness. You sent Jesus to give us a heart of mercy and to fill us with love for all that you have made. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. On the night before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. When the supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, Father, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. God of life, we remember before you those of our parish whose anniversary of death we commemorate this week, Jane and Laverne and Gift. We rejoice in the gift of eternal life they now enjoy in heaven with you and all the saints who have gone before us. Also remembering Jesus' love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We pray for the gift of your Spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Together we pray with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace with all of you. Peace.
I welcome you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and new earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Loving God, bless our families and fill our homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Especially send your blessing upon Tom and Amy and their family, Richard and Cindy and their family, Vicki and her family. Protect them, guide them, and deepen their love for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our Creator and Redeemer, we join the voices of our siblings in Ukraine and we pray for peace. For those who bring violence and destruction, we pray that you would create in them a clean heart and a right spirit. Receive into your mercy all who have died. Sustain those who grieve. And for those who continue to flee, grant safety and sanctuary. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. May our loving and merciful God bless us, protect us, and defend us from all evil 
and bring us to new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. So what's, what's the proper number for the closing hymn? It's, is it 309? It's 509. Okay, 509. Thank you.